Recording in progress. Here we are, guys. Welcome, everybody. As people come in, it's 7.33. I'm starting exactly the same time I started last night with the ladies. So we're staying status quo. Um, I am blessed to be here with all of you. My name is Mike Winkoff. I go by Coach Wink. I can change my name on this, but well, I don't have to do that right now. Uh, in this uh, webinar, we brought in, uh, besides being two great men, they're also my partners in this Juniors Open Venture. And uh, we got Coach Holman, Brian Holman, up there on the left, and Tom Schreiber, at least on my screen, to the bottom. Uh, coach Holman is the one that um, was the coach of the year in the PLL last year after coaching uh, Division One lacrosse for 240 years. How many years did you coach? <laughs> Division One coach? Long enough. Just plenty, <laughs> plenty of years. <laughs> and coach Schreiber uh, played at uh, St. Anthony's High School in Long Island. Went to uh, Princeton, graduated from Princeton, started playing in the PLL, then took on the NLL and uh, still playing. Has a two-year-old daughter, Lily, and married to Kathleen and had just had little Patrick, uh, what, two weeks ago? Congrats, Tommy. Yep, I appreciate that. Coming up on a month, believe it or not. So wow. Yeah. It's gone Time, flies. Time flies, Tom. Is he sleeping? <laughs> He's doing well. He's doing well. That's great, man. Well, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. So tonight we're going to talk about the Juniors Open. We're going to talk about recruiting. We're going to talk about social media. We're going to talk about uh, things you should do, things you shouldn't do, and uh, hopefully educate you. One of the things I want you to know is, um, well, I'm going to do it right now. There's a little chat. You could just type in something in the chat and we can answer the question. We got a bunch of questions. I'm just putting in uh, Coach Wink's cell phone. So if anybody needs to get a hold of me, because we're here to uh, help you all. Oh, I like the logo popped up. That's pretty cool. Um, the uh, One of the things that I, I think is a little different about the Juniors Open is that the men that are involved in this event, uh, Coach Schreiber, Coach Holman, and myself, um, we're here to help you through the process, um, not just – up to the event, but after the event and guide you and hopefully mentor you and be another person in your life that can help you. So realize that, um, reach on, you know, lean on us. And I hope you understand that, that <clears throat> the goal is to find the right fit. Okay. Not uh, to just find a school, but find the best fit for uh, yourself. And if you if the parents are listening to, to your son, um, I'm going to start with some questions. Um, you're welcome to pop some questions in the chat if you'd like, but there were a bunch of questions that came in. So the first question I'm going to bring up, this one I'm going to start with, uh, you both can answer it, but I'll start with Coach Holman. Uh, Coach Holman, one of the things with, in today's environment is social media. Can you just uh, give the uh, audience a little information on how social media can help you and how it can hurt you? Um. Sure, Wink. Uh, so good to be here with you guys, and uh, obviously with Tom and, and Mike. Um, you know, I think this is I think this is a really unique event. These webinars, guys, um, and you guys should be really proud and honored uh, to be on here, especially with somebody like Tommy. And you know, um, and and be proud that that you are here because it shows that that you care, um, and it and it shows that you're you know trying to do the right thing. So um, excited to be with you guys tonight and hopefully be able to pass on some information that will be helpful um, because at the end of the day, that's all we really want is to be able to help you guys uh, through this process. Sometimes it can seem daunting. Hopefully, you know, some information that you'll get tonight uh, will uh, alleviate some of that worry. Um, and at the end of the day, my experience uh, through this for a very long time is, is, is most of you guys, 90 to 95% of you guys will end up at the place that you that you really um, want to be and at the place that you probably should be at. So um, take a deep breath. Hopefully we'll, we'll be able to lend some um, guidance and some clarity uh, to the to the process tonight and echo what Wink said is that we're we're here to help you. One of the reasons that we are all involved in this uh, organization. First of all, we, we all have similar mindsets in really what we want to try to provide uh, to the customer. And that's you guys is, is guidance and clarity. And, 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 and we care about 
how this process affects you and, and ultimately what your long-term goals are. So, um, so to social media, I'm probably not, not the right guy to, to talk about this wink. Uh, I'll leave Tommy into the, to the more of maybe the, the plus side. Um, what I know is that, that social media is there, right? It's, it's, it's real. Everybody's on it. Um, it's a way of life. Um, so to, to, to tell you not to use it or tell you not to have it uh, would probably not be a wise thing. What I would suggest from a coaching perspective uh, is just to be very, very wary uh, and, and, and really use it in a manner that um, is, is going to be a, a benefit and, and not put yourself out there in a, in a, in a negative tone. And these are all things that you're probably going to hear from your parents and your high school coaches or club coaches. Um, you know, uh, my son Marcus said something years ago at a clinic that I really liked is basically just don't put anything out there that you wouldn't want your grandmother, uh, to be proud of. Right. Um, so I, I'm going to use it more of like, just be, be careful. Um, coaches are on it. Uh, coaches will, you know, randomly scroll through and they're going to look at whatever that, that they can get access to. So just be careful um, and, and really try to be cognizant of, of how you want to represent yourself uh, out in the world, not just for the lacrosse sake of it, but just in general, you know, how do you want to be perceived as a young man uh, in today's society? So, um, but it's, it's real and it can help you, uh, but it can also, it can also hurt you. So, uh, so just be, leery, you know, a little bit leery about it. But Tommy, I think you're probably a little bit more verse on this than I am. Yeah, sure. Thanks, coach. Um, and just before I get going on that, just to reiterate um, what Coach Wink and, and, and Coach Holman both said. Um, yeah, the point of these webinars is, is to start to establish um, some sort of rapport with all of you. Obviously, you guys are spread out um, across North America. And this is, you know, uh, on paper, a, a three-day event that'll help you get recruited, but we're really putting as much effort as we can into making a longer lasting impact, whether that's questions on this chat, whether that's you reaching out to us after. Um, we're all available um, to you know, go further in depth into, into certain questions or, hey, what can I do on this? Like We, we want to be that resource for all of you. Um, prior to, during, and after the event. So um, that's our goal, and that's why we're uh, we're gathered here tonight. Um, on the social media front, Coach, I think I think you nailed it. I think what, what it comes down to for me is um, there's been plenty of players that have lost an opportunity because of social media. I don't think there's ever been one that's gained an opportunity because of social media. So, um, you know, I don't want to go as far as to say that it – I don't see a world where it would help you. Um, it could kind of only hurt you, but I would say be yourself and, and coach, I think your um, advice around, you know, kind of the, the grandmother example uh, is, is a, is a perfect point. So, um, you know, we're, we're realistic. You guys are kids. You should be kids. You should have fun. You should do your thing. But um, at the end of the day, the majority of the folks on this zoom, the majority of the folks on this, uh, call and, and, and going to the event, you guys want to accomplish extraordinary things. So, um, that comes with some sacrifice. And if that means you should, you know, not put something up and, and I would say just, you know, I, all of this stuff has passed me over too. I'm getting old now with my two kids, but, um, that the, the social media thing includes Snapchat. Like, I think just, um, you know, I, I've seen guys lose opportunities, um, you know, for, for silly stuff that's completely avoidable. So, um, you know, ways it could kind of help is, you know, you could be supportive to teammates. You can kind of show your interests, whether it's lacrosse, community service, school, um, try to see your post through a coach's eyes and, you know, whether or not you'd want that guy on your team. And I think that's probably the best way to go about it. You know, it's, it's funny, guys. Um, last night when we were talking to the ladies, one of the things that came up was, during the process, uh, college coaches, because a lot of them are relatively young, um, you know, at least at least the assistant coaches are relatively young. They utilize it and they start to follow some of the players that they're interested in or 
possibly interested in. They want to start to get to know uh, that prospective recruit by following them and seeing kind of what they're all about. And that could be a positive, meaning it could tell you, oh, you know, this school is interested in me because they started following me. Um, and obviously they can't contact you till September 1st, but they want to get to know you or evaluate you. And, you know, they, 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 by the law, they're really not allowed, even though it happens, to reach out and speak to coaches about you. Do people do that? Of course they do. Okay. Do coaches speak to your club coach or your high school coach or whoever's in your life? Um, yes, they do. So just realize, I think the thing that Coach Holman said that he got from Marcus, his son, was, you know, if if your grandma doesn't think it's cool, don't 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 put it up. And I think that's a really really good advice. So I would live by that. Moving on to get away from social media, and I, I agree with Tommy personally. When I hear people don't have social media and they're a young 16, 17 year old, it's kind of refreshing. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you're like, that's, that's cool. You know, that you don't follow the pack. Um, I always think that's a, that's a positive when you don't follow the pack. So uh, one of the questions that came in and, and this is interesting, the college coaches focus on accolades from showcases, you know, lacrosse magazine, inside lacrosse, et cetera, rankings. Do they use those college coaches to evaluate or does it matter? Does it come into play when you're recruiting? Um, <clears throat> I would say for the most part, not, not, not really. Um, you know, at the end of the day, each one of these coaches, um, their, their livelihood pretty much depends on, on the decisions that they're making on, in, in the recruiting process. So I'm not sure, you know, anybody's going to trust really anybody else, um, with, with that decision. So, and I, and I think ultimately that's, again, a benefit if you look at the juniors open, you know, when we get the majority of the division one head coaches, you know, at our event, um, you know, they're the ones at the end of the day that are going to be pulling the trigger on, on who's going to get recruited or not. The assistant coaches on most of the staffs are, are information gatherers and they're going to go out and they're going to see kids and they're going to make no, notes and they're going to compile information. And then, you know, when push comes to shove, it's going to be the head coach sitting down with the assistants and saying, you know, okay, I've seen this kid and I like this kid. And I hear, I see your notes, but I saw this kid at this tournament and, and I like the way he played. So I know that's getting off track a little bit, but I would say, no, I'd say they're not going to sit down with the inside lacrosse top 50 rating ratings and, and say, um, we need to go get this kid, this kid, this kid, this kid, because, you know, uh, they're not going to put their livelihood in somebody else's hands when it comes to, to, to making their team. And they also know what kind of kids they're looking for. Um, so I wouldn't put a tremendous amount of stock uh, in being rated. Uh, I would put a tremendous amount of stock in being an all-star um, at the juniors open. I would put a tremendous amount of stock as a coach uh, at knowing that, you know, maybe I was one of the top 25 or 50 players uh, at the juniors open. That's, that's the way you're going to, kind of make your case to be recruited. Um, but I wouldn't worry too much if I, if I wasn't in the inside lacrosse write up uh, after some tournament somewhere, if that makes sense. Um, so I think I, did I answer that? Yeah. It's something makes interesting sense. I'll just bring up, you know, you, you watch like football, they do the top 300 and the ESPN 300 and this and that, and then they rank the teams by their, recruiting classes by how many of those kids they get and all that other BS. At the end of the day, these coaches are evaluating you in so many different ways. I could sit there and, and Brian Holman could tell you 150 <laughs> stories in his lifetime of how he evaluates young men. And a lot of it has to do with how you are as a teammate, what kind of human being you are, you know, the characteristics of you as do you, celebrate others or are you selfish you know what i mean so keep that in mind if you really want to evaluate evaluate you know the, the quality of the person i talk all the time and i don't want to embarrass tommy but i coached him 
when he was in fifth and sixth and seventh grade. And he's the same young man he was then. He really is. You know, and he never forgot where he came from. He's always been had good manners. He's always been good to his parents. I mean, I, I could tell you, I, I, I heard this story about from a Vanderbilt baseball assistant coach. He comes back from a recruiting trip. And the coach said, what do you think of the kid? And he goes, oh, the kid's a stud. He goes, well, give me a ranking, zero to 100, 100 being the best. No, I'm sorry, one to 100, 100 being the best. He goes, a zero. And he goes, well, I thought you said he was a stud. He goes, yeah, he was a stud. He goes, he threw 97 miles per hour and no one can hit him. But during the game, his mom came over to give him a Gatorade and she had to like reach over the fence to give him the Gatorade and like stand on her tippy toes. And like, he then like just threw it over the fence at her, never said thank you, never said anything and treated her like crap. Yeah. He goes, I'd never recruit this kid. I mean, if that doesn't say it all right there, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Wouldn't you yeah. say, Brian? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, wait, there's a, there's, and, and I, and I think, I think the point being is, you know, who, who, who do you want to play in front of, you know, John Tillman or is it, or is Ty Zanders more important, right? Like, so, you know, and I think everybody on here probably knows Ty with the, with the ranking systems and so on and so forth. So, yeah, the coaches are looking at a myriad of things when, when it comes to evaluating talent. Um, you know, they're going to look at on the field play. They're going to look at athleticism. They're going to look at the teammate, you know, they're going to look at how you arrive on the field. They're going to look at how you react uh, on the fifth game of a long, hot weekend. And maybe your team hasn't won a game yet. Um, you know, they're going to, they're going to watch your approach. They're going to, they're, they're, there's a gazillion things. They're going to follow up with your guidance counselors. They're going to follow up with your basketball coach because they don't want to talk to the lacrosse coach and find out what kind of teammate you are and, you know, so so, you know, the the people that are doing the rankings are looking at a a a singular block of evaluation, and that's really kind of how they view you playing. The coaches are taking a much broader base, um, and that's why again I wouldn't put a tremendous amount of stock in what the the newspapers or the articles or the inside lacrosses or whatever evaluators that are out there. It's not that they don't know what they're looking at. Um, but that's not going to, at the end of the day, that's not going to be the decision maker. It's going to be the, the college coach and his staff. Uh, and that evaluation period is going to, is going to carry on, you know, from the moment they see you, that they think that they, that you would be a fit for their program all the way through the summer and, 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 and possibly even longer. Right. So it's not, it's going to be an evaluation period over a period of time you know, what the juniors open does. And I think this is an, an advantage for us is, is that we're, we're one of the first events. So it's going to allow you to get on the board early. Um, and that's going to, that's going to allow the coaches to, to get information on and gather information on you over the course of the summer. And it's a great event to make your first mark uh, on the recruiting trail. Cause it really is the first big event of the summer. So, um, but yeah. So one of the questions... I would add just before you go, Wink, um, I, I would say, you know, those um, accolades, selections to all tournament teams, selections to all-star games, right? It, it's part of, uh, it's part of building a profile. It's part of building a resume. So it certainly plays a little bit of yeah. a role. Yeah. Um, that said, I think where things get misconstrued and, and this is exactly what um, coach and, and, and Wink are talking about um, it's just how much value there is in that. So it certainly is it nice to be able to say, hey, coach, like, here's who I am. You know, I'm a six foot defender from X, Y, Z. Here's my resume to date. I'll be playing at X, Y, Z events. Like, yes, that will help. But at the end of the day, I think what's really important to understand um, and, and acknowledge is that these college coaches do an excellent job. Um you know, a, a lot of you guys are big time players. So you see them at event after event after event. Um, parents, players, you guys have highlight tapes. Like those guys watch them. You know, like I've been in the office. Like those guys are watching film um, of high school players all day. Um, so what those things do, they can strengthen your resume just to get another look, um, I would say. But for us, again, like 
being a part of this event is one of those things, just being selected to go. Like we've pre-vetted, you know, all, all everybody has to be invited. Um, college coaches who Coach Holman typically deals with have given us great feedback on on the guys who have been selected. So that's why he kind of led this call with, you know, you should be honored to be here because it is, you know, it's a pretty rigorous process. You know, we we do the same thing. You know, we watch all the film, we talk to the coaches, we make sure we're getting the right guys. So to be here comes with, you know, a certain gold star. And then, you know, our job um, is to provide the platform, you know, and, and again, that's Coach Holman's kind of part of this. Um, so seeing that live evaluation early in the summer from head coaches is what we've strived to create. Um, so yes, those things can't hurt you. Um obsessing over rankings and all that stuff uh, is a mistake um, and making sure you're performing at the highest level when given the opportunity. And, 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 you know, again, we've tried to provide the best platform that we can. Um, and then it's on you to kind of seize that opportunity. Yeah. Well Great advice. Um, you know, I'm just going to pop through a few questions because these are questions that were asked uh, by the audience. Um, is it important for these young men to fill out recruiting questionnaires for each school that they're interested in? And if so, when should they, you know, do this? When should they fill it out? At what point? Hmm. Uh, I mean, it, it definitely doesn't hurt, right? It's just, again, another step of interest um, that you're showing to the, to, to the university. I, I would fill it out before the summer starts. For sure, right? Because um, they do they, again. They, as Tommy pointed out, there's not many stones that don't that don't go unturned with the coaches. Um, it may seem that the process is a little flawed or or whatever. Some people have different opinions about it, but you know these guys work very, very, very hard. So so they're gonna, you know, if you show interest in them. Um, they're going to show interest in you until they figure out whether you're a good fit or not. So uh, I would, I would fill it out and I would get it in there before the recruiting cycle starts. Um, most of the summer is starting to be planned. And, and obviously if you put where you're going, uh, they can start, what they have, what they do is they take the information off of that information and they just put it on a huge spreadsheet and, and they start to start to organize by event, which kids are going to be at what event. So uh, it just gives the coaches more information to work with. You know, Tommy, anything yeah, on that? I'd agree. Yeah, nothing to add. I mean, I think the, those sorts of touch points are can only help you. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. But one of the things that uh, recruits have always, always asked me, like, who's going to be at the event? Who's going to be at the event? And I'm like, don't worry who's at the event. Do this. You're interested in, I'll make it up. You're interested in NESCAC schools, Patriot League schools, Ivy League schools, whatever, because of your academic transcript. Now, email them all. And if they get enough interest, if, if 100 kids are going to be at an event and I'll make up a school, Lehigh gets an email about them, they're going to be like, we got 100 kids coming to this event that are interested in our school. You, you're making the process a little bit easier for the coach when they go to an event. It's like, you know, it's like asking a girl to dance at your first dance. You don't know if she wants to dance. Well, if her girlfriend says, hey, Wink, this girl likes you. Well, the rejection is going to be less. It's the same thing, guys. More people now know Lehigh got people that are interested in them. So it's just that communication that you should put together to help. You know, everybody thinks like, oh, they're Lehigh. Everybody wants to go to Lehigh. No, not everybody wants to go to Lehigh. It's a great school, but not everybody wants to go there, you know? So you have to understand that you're helping them vet. So communication is a good thing. Now, sending them an email every day, that's a little bit crazy. Don't be a, don't be a stalker, you know, don't be a, a, a crazy person. So you be smart. Um, some questions are coming in about video. So I guess I'll ask both hey, of you hey, guys. Hey, wait, just, just real quick, Coach Holman, if you could just answer this quickly, where's that line? right? Like between too much communication and, you know, not enough, because I think these guys, you know, that that's more so the difficult thing to understand. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I think, I think a questionnaire, uh, I think an email 
to the prospective schools that you're interested in with a, with a general overview of, of who you are and, and why you are interested in. And then I think, you know, a, a short video um, clip, you know, not necessarily just of highlights, but a three to a three and a half minute video. But I think, I think three, I think probably Tommy, like three touch points between now and, and the summertime is plenty, you know, you know, every other month or so, just, just to say hello and, and, and be there. Any, anything more than probably three, I think is starting to get to the point where, all right, we heard you, we got you on our list, we've seen you. And now we're, we're good. Okay. So uh, I, I would put that number at three. I think that that sounds about right. And I would also add, um, it, so I'll preface with, this doesn't mean it's an open invitation to keep contacting them, but I also wouldn't be discouraged if you don't get a response. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. The, the, and coach, you've been through it, like the email inbox of a, uh, of a yeah. college coach uh, whose email is public and available to everybody um, is vast. So, you know, they'll take a look at that. They can't respond to everybody, but those touch points to coach Wink's point, you know, it does help to vet you a little bit. So I think three is probably the right number. And, and I would, again, just say, you know, don't, don't be discouraged if you don't hear back. It's just a, a numbers game. It's not a, an indictment on you at all. Yep. Okay. A couple of juniors open questions that I'll get rid of on the question and answer. Um, it's, I thought it said that on the site that the 26 players will have a media day at the Juniors Open. What does that entail? So the media the media is is basically um, we line up by team and we we do photo shoots that we utilize to promote the athlete. Um, we are ad adding a extra component this year where they'll have an opportunity to get some extra pictures and extra video, which you could pay for, which will be extended. But every 26 gets you know two three photos and we'll utilize those and then we'll share them with you that you could use for your profiles and stuff like that in the future so um i answered that live i guess i didn't done so i took that one off um and then uh th th this is a good one about highlights um first of all should highlight videos have music <laughs> uh for me, if you were going to put like Motown or some <laughs> Southern rock on it or something like that, uh, I would say yes. But um, I, I, you know, I, I, I never, I never listened. To, uh, I would just, I always turn the music down because we watch, you know, an inordinate amount of, of, of highlight films. Um, the only thing the music's going to do is call you out probably like Tom mentioned earlier with social media is kind of call you out in a negative tone. Like nobody's going to be a recruit you more because you put a really good song on um, video. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's the way of life right now. Most coaches don't listen to any of the music that is, is put on. I would say 90% of the coaches do not listen to the music. So. Um, yeah. I, I would just say don't, don't put on anything inappropriate, which I think everybody understands. And, you know, the only upside you could get real lucky. I mean, um, you know, I, I don't know how you would understand what that coach loves music wise, but I, I suppose that could help you if you uh, happen to put, you know, Motown beat if coach Holman was uh, coaching the school of your choice. Um, but yeah, be smart. I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter either way, as long as it's not inappropriate. But yeah, what's so only gonna what's only gonna help Tom is if that music coincides with the six foot two, two hundred and fifteen pound downhill <laughs> left right. Now if they go together, we hit the grand slam. But if, <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's not a bad point. I mean, I, I, I was thinking about saying that. You know, like um, if you're a big physical defender, I mean, if you're matching that energy with the tunes, like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's an opportunity to kind of showcase what you're all about. Um, sure. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Good yeah. question. It, it is. And it's interesting because I've watched a lot of film as um, I guess we're considered recruiters when it comes to the juniors open. For sure. And, uh, I can tell you that there's some film that was awesome. One of the questions is asking, should it be exclusively sidelight video of your typical tournament video with call outs or, or a good mix? I got to tell you something. What annoys the hell out of me 
is when there's no music and you hear the mom or the dad screaming the kid's name every time they make a good play because it sounds like dad and mom are taking you should if you're going to do highlight film do it right in my opinion and let some professional do it if you want music do music um don't have like a it's it's you know you're not francis ford coppola you don't have to put a picture of your beautiful prep school i don't need to see what school you go to i don't need to see the beautiful grounds i don't need to see you know you walking up to the field with your bag on we're here to watch you play lacrosse and if we like you as a lacrosse player we're recruiting you and then we'll decide if we like you as a person so you got to be a great lacrosse player before you get the handshake from the coach and the introduction and the invitation and the official and unofficial visits. So it's really just about the lacrosse component. You know what I mean? But I would, I would put it together, you know, and I, I say three, three and a half minutes max. I've seen six minute videos and I like cringe. You don't, you don't need it. I, I would say too, um, for specialty positions, so the goalies and faceoff guys, um, they, they want to see the real speed, right? So the slow mo doesn't tell you what you want, what those coaches want to see. Um, so if you're going to incorporate slow motion, make sure you show the fast motion as well, right? That's like for those positions in particular, like that's what they're trying to evaluate. Yeah. I saw something really cool from a female goalie. She happened to be a Canadian goalie. And she had a video on her the whole game. So let's just say it was a field game and she gave up, I'll make it up, six goals. But she made nine saves, 11 saves, whatever she made. But you saw every single shot that she took in that game. And you got to see her save it or not save it, you know, clear it in the times you did save it. So I thought it was really, really good and 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 because you got to see everything and you got to see how they reacted. So from a evaluation standpoint, I thought that was pretty cool for goalies. I've never seen that before. It's the first time I ever saw it. Just for our goalies out there. Anyway, um, so I'll take that sideline stuff off. Let's take that off. And hey, hey, Wink, I think that uh, I just want to mention quick, and, and and both you guys touched on it a little bit before when we were talking about rankings and all that stuff. Um, the evaluation beyond the lacrosse field part is not just like uh, nice like sound bites for people to say. Like if you really want to dig deep into it, right? If you're a college coach, right, your job security depends on picking the right forty-five to fifty kids who won't get in trouble. Um, who will come together in, in, during adversity, who will go to, you know, arrive on campus in, in, a, in a strange place and, and, and thrive and, and not kind of falter. So the couple of things that they're evaluating, um, they, they, they truly are looking at, okay, how does this guy respond to a bad play? Um, right. The, the stick smashing on the ground, like that's not, those coaches don't interpret that as like, oh, wow, this guy really cares. They look at, oh, wow, like what is this guy going to do when it's snowing and it's Thursday, 6 a.m. lift in the fall and you don't have a game and he shows up 15 minutes late and he gives us half effort. Is that the type of – like that's how they interpret that stuff. So um, evaluating that attitude, effort, hustle, character piece, um, again, is not just like – a nice thing to say, right? Like this is like a closed zoom for juniors open. Like, like we're hope we're, you know, this is an, an interview, um, you know, that, so we, we mean that like that, that stuff is important and wink that, you know, reaction that you would just kind of mentioned, like, that's a real thing. That Vanderbilt baseball example is a real thing. Like guys walking to and from the parking lot, you know, are they, how are they carrying themselves? Are they leaving trash on the sideline? Like there are little things that you can fully control um, that will help. Now, will that get you into Duke if you're not a good lacrosse player? No. But if there's a lot of great lacrosse players looking for a few spots, doesn't matter where that school is um, or, or who that school is, 
you know, I, I, I promise like those guys, their job depends on taking the right guys and good human beings. So um, that's a real piece of this. So beyond resume and, and great film and all that stuff and getting it done on the field, like you, you do have to take care of that piece. And generally it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, just be respectful and be a good human being, but don't discount that through this process. Like it's, it's a real, real part of it. Yeah. Uh, I think it, I think it's, it's much bigger than most people realize, you know what I'm saying? You know, I and then, and then I a think parent, it's the biggest, I think it's the biggest piece, honestly. Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's yeah. also the piece that, that makes you decision. Am I taking this midfielder or this midfielder? Because you you're you're as a coach, you're arguably making that decision, right? You're saying I'm offering Joe, not not Jimmy, because even though they're both awesome lacrosse players, Joe has the intangibles that you want. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. And 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 you know, to be perfectly honest with you, most coaches will take someone with maybe a slightly less ability or a little bit less talent but maybe overloaded on the intangible side uh, first. So, 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 uh, you know, you know, Johnny is here and Jimmy is here and, and maybe we've watched them play four or five, six times over the course of the summer, but over the course of our due diligence in our work, we have found out that, that Jimmy has, has all these other intangibles as Tom was talking about. He's, a three sport athlete. He's, he's a really good student. He's, he's, you know, his coaches rave about his demeanor and his, his, his temperance and his work ethic and, you know, all, all the intangibles that you're looking for. And, 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 and maybe Johnny doesn't quite have as many, but he's, he's more talented. You know, I would argue that 75 to 80% of the coaches are going to take the guy that's a little bit less, um, and, and any other thing, guys, uh, you know, while we're on this, and this is really important, um, every one of these coaches that are out there that are going to be recruiting you this summer, starting at the Juniors Open, um, they understand completely where you are in your life. Like, they understand that you're going into your junior year in high school. They're, they're not looking for miracles, right? They're, they're, they're looking for guys that, that they think – can physically and mentally compete, number one, um, at this stage of your life at the next level. But they're also looking for growth opportunities because really that's what this whole process is about, right? It's about, you know, being a junior, going into your junior year in high school, having that coach envision what you're going to look like, you know, over the next six years, okay? Some guys are really good at that, right? And, and, you know, a great coach is going to understand that you you don't have it all together right now. It's almost unheard of, you know, at a 15 year old or 16 year old kid that has all his shit together. Um, and they're just looking for that window that says, wow, I see so much in this young man. I can see it by the way he's playing. I've seen he's gotten better over the course of the weekend. I see him three weeks from now and man. You know, he doesn't look worn out. He's he's not losing weight. He's he doesn't look like he's tired of playing lacrosse. Like they're looking for all these little things that show that incremental growth uh, is a sign that that you're going to that you're going to a, a trait that you're going to possess. Right. So so don't don't think you have to have it all wrapped up when you show up on the first weekend. Understand that this is a process and understand the coaches completely understand who you are and where you are in this process. And maybe that'll eliminate some of the pressure that, that you maybe self-inflict or gets inflicted upon you. Cause that's the worst thing can, that can happen um, is, is understanding that these guys are looking at you from now and, and wow, what's he going to look like when he's a senior in my program? Um, is he going to be one of those guys? So uh, I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope that maybe alleviates some of the pressure that you might feel or, or, or build up because there shouldn't be any, you really should go out there with, you know, loose grips on your stick and, and, and let her rip. Um, but understand there are things that you're going to have to do in the process. That's going to earn your trust amongst these coaches as the summer goes along. Um, so. Wink, I know we got to get some more questions and we're, we're coming up 
you know, to towards wrapping this up, but I think coach made an important point, you know, like tonight's topics are, are, are focused on kind of maximizing and optimizing your experience and all of the things you can do um, to get the most out of your recruiting experience and, and, and all the advice that we have. But I, I think what's important to remember um, is you, you have to enjoy lacrosse, <laughs> you know, like I've, I've gone through that before where it's, it's become too serious and, you know, the, the fun is taken out of it and, you know, being recruited, wanting to accomplish amazing things like comes, you know, with pressure um, and, it, and, you know, it comes with sacrifice. And I think we've spent a lot of time on that, but I think it also comes with needing to find out how to enjoy it. Right. And, and this is just my experience. You know, everyone's is a little different, but for me, it's just being really organized. So, you know, and, and I'm sure the parents that are on this call, they still have to do it too, right? You go to work, you have to raise your children, you have to be part of the family, you know, and, and, and do all these things. Like, as a student athlete who's trying to achieve great things in the classroom, achieve great things on the field, make sure you're not slamming your stick, study hard, <laughs> manage your social media. Like you're, you're, there's a lot to handle. So I think like having a plan, you know, going into the day or going into the week, okay, at this time, this is my homework at this time. This is my lacrosse work at this time. I'm going to X, Y, Z training. Um, you know, but, as you're planning out that week, I think you should carve out some time. Okay. This is where I'm going to go see, you know, my boys and we're going to go hang out and whatever your thing is. Like if you're a video game guy, like do that within reason, you know, I think it's, it's important to find that balance. Um, and the more you enjoy it, the better and more free flowing you'll be. So that doesn't, and now that can swing in either direction, right? You can kind of go too far and not take it seriously enough. Or you could take it so serious to the point where everything is just a big ball of stress. So that's a little different for everybody. Um, I'd say like this is probably where I could be most helpful on, on a personal level. So if there are players on here dealing with that sort of thing, like I'm happy to help because I think it makes a huge difference um, both with your performance on field and, you know, your overall enjoyment of, of lacrosse, which is supposed to be fun. So. Yeah, that's, I think it's great advice from both of you. Um, you know, it's funny. We could we could literally be here all night, and I'm going to ask a, a few more questions and then get to the nitty-gritty. I've ans answered a few myself just in the type just so for people. But one of the questions, and this is a good question, and the Juniors Open was, was kind of built on this. How should a player balance showcasing their individual skills in a showcase while illustrating good team play? Um, we will we will have a practice um the first day of the event and the coaches will talk about playing the right way. And if someone's not playing the right way, they're running through double and triple teams, they will be called out and told that that's not the right way to play. So um, I personally, I mean, I would guide my own child play the way I coached you play the right way. I mean, Tommy, would you say that, when you were out there showcasing your ability, you were just playing the way you always played, no? Yeah, so I, I would say a couple things on that question, and it, and it's really a great question, um, and we appreciate it. And, and I, I think it ties into, you know, why the three of us kind of work together, like on like at the individual showcase world. I don't, I don't think any of us like intended on being here, but for whatever reason, we're all working on it. And hopefully the thing that comes across is we are trying to solve, you know, for the, the things that you hear about individuals. Oh, it's just, you know, I, I had a ball hog on my team. I didn't, you know, touch the ball. So our, our first solve for that is like trying to preemptively um, avoid that by bringing in great high school coaches. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to get my dad in, um, Oh, that'd be awesome. He's uh, he's still, still he's the only one who hasn't gotten back to me for some reason, but um, <laughs> you know. So I I think bringing in high school coaches that know the team game is an intentional decision for us. Um, for college coaches, seeing players playing in with their team can show a lot. The individual side shows okay, this guy's in a new environment. How does he react? Also, like, the level of play 
which is our job to provide, is super high. How does he respond in a hyper competitive environment? How does he respond being a part of a new team? You know, and it's not a one to one comparison to joining college lacrosse, but it is sort of, you know, it, it gives them an idea of how kids will react. So in terms of how you should play, um, we've tried to address that by bringing in great coaches um, who one won't allow it to will run like a real offense, um, you know, and defense for that matter. And then we've also brought in, um, we'll have a third coach to handle subbing because that's another thing that, you know, we never would want someone to attend something and not play enough. Um, so we try to address that stuff prior to the event. And then in terms of how you carry yourself, and I'm answering this mainly from an offensive player standpoint, um, you want to play team ball, but you don't want to be too passive either. Right. It's kind of like what we were talking about before. You don't want, you have to showcase your skills. Um, so there's a fine line between doing that um, and being selfish. So I think this ties back into giving college coaches credit. If you don't end up with the goal or the assist, but you were the one who made that play. If you were the one who drew the slide, passed the ball, that guy passed the ball again, you're the one getting circled um, on their list. So giving coaches credit um, in terms of evaluating play, um, I think matters. So contribute is, is how I would phrase that. So it doesn't mean go get the ball, go right to the rack every time. It's, but I'm going to play really fast off ball. I'm going to cut through really fast. My stick's going to be up the whole time. When I'm dodging, I'm going to beat my guy and make the right play. Um, so be assertive, but don't be selfish. Be a team player, um, but showcase what you can do. So there's a fine line. Um, we try to control what we can control as like the operators of the event. But when you're out there, um, play team ball, but show what you can do. Make good decisions. Great advice. Best, the best ever I've heard explained was just now. Now I know Brian wants to say something, but I just got to give one quick antidote, Brian, before you jump in. And this is really important for people to know. Tommy was explaining to you, these coaches, this is what they do for a living. There's an old saying in the offensive side of the ball, make the defense move. Okay. And coaches know that your dodge started that goal. And really, they're looking for guys that make the defense move. I mean, I'll use Michael Sowers just since he's not on this call. I can't use Tommy on every anecdote. But Michael Sowers makes the defense move. He gets their eyes. He gets the slides. And then the ball starts moving, and it ends up in the back of the net. So if you understand, and parents, if you don't understand the game of lacrosse, that's the game of lacrosse. So that's huge. Great advice. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, no, I, I Tommy nailed it. Um, I, I think the, the point to, to emphasize again is the high school coaches. Um, I know as a college coach, seeing seeing the guys that we have over there on the sidelines, um, there's a comfort level in knowing that the kids are going to be prepared and they're going to actually play lacrosse, right? So like you go into it, the college coaches know when they come to the juniors open um, and then you're going to be competing against some of the best, if not the best players in the country. And the last piece to that is, and and Tom hit this. I we really I I never I don't go I would never go to an event as a college coach uh, an event such as the Juniors Open looking yeah it'd be cool for guys to just blow by everybody and go score a goal but the reality of that happening at the next level unless you are a Tom Schreiber or you are Mike Sowers there's only a handful of those guys in the country that actually can just run right by their guys and score right. I was more interested, can he carry a double, all right? You know, can he get out of trouble? Um, what is? What am I doing adjacent when the guy is carrying a double? Um, am I showing my stick? Am I being available to help my teammate? Am I smart enough to get through when I'm supposed to get through? So it's mostly, really for us, it's a lot of the off-ball play because that is essentially what you're going to get to offensively when you go to college. Now, defensively, you know, what – Am I talking? Do I have a voice? The first thing I would do is just really try to glue my ears in to the defensive players we were looking at. And, you know, if he was a mute, you know, there would be a notation, no talk right next to him. Now, if he's got a voice, there would be a notation, big voice. 
right next to them. So that's the first thing I look for, right? And 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 then you go to approaches, um, and and then you go to physicality, and then you go to can I get the ball off the ground? So there's so many different ways that these guys are looking at you guys to evaluate. And it's impossible for you to go out on the field and start thinking, I've got to be all of this, right? So just go out, use what God gave you, your best ability, adapt to the team situation that you're in. And through the sport of lacrosse, because of the way it plays, you're going to get a time and a place to showcase all of your skills over five games. All right. So that's the other piece. You're playing, right? We play what? Five. Three games, three games three Saturday games. and two on Sunday. And then, then you have the VIP experience where you're going to be able to showcase skill work in front of the top 20, 22 college coaches, 25 college coaches in the country. So there's a myriad of ways, but I, I think Tom hit the nail on the head is that, you know, you, you don't want to be passive, but you don't want to be overly aggressive. You just want to be a great teammate. And whatever that means to you, just do it to your highest level of ability. And coaches will see that in spades over the weekend. Yeah. And uh, the advice that Tommy said, they do it for a living and they know it. I mean, they know. Um, I, I just put in, and this is something for everybody. I just, one of the questions was our email addresses. I just put it, in, I, I responded to whoever asked it. But um, because someone told me that the chat wasn't working and I don't want to try to fix anything because that'll just mean I'll implode this whole webinar. And <laughs> these guys know uh, I should add my uh, my trusty partner, Corey, do this, but it, he's busy with four little ones at home. Um, <laughs> but the reality is, is that um, I email you guys. I'll give you Tommy's email. I'll give you Brian's, e Brian's email. You'll have my email. And then you, you're welcome to speak to any of us, all of us, whatever works. I suggest you email one of us because then one of us will answer. If you send it to three, then we're going to try to figure out which one of us is going to answer. So you're always better off just asking one. Um, I always hated what did, when people send emails to three people because I'm like, am I supposed to answer? Are you supposed to answer? Are you supposed to answer this email? Anyway. Um, I would also yeah. keep in mind um, when you email with Coach Wink, <laughs> he has his own style of communicating. Um <laughs> I'll catch. <laughs> it might seem it might seem <laughs> short, but he's a very nice man, and uh, he capitalizes in random spots. But he's very helpful and great resource for you. So keep that in mind. Don't be turned off if you get a one word answer from Coach Wink. <laughs> how he does. Uh, it's 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 all love. It's all done with love for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you for explaining my uh, idiosyncrasies because they definitely need. The, the, the full caps, the, sh the short answers, and um, what else? I, oh, and I might email you at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you give me your cell phone, text you. So don't, if you leave your phone next to your bed, don't text me, because I can text you at all times of the night and morning. That is true. Um, another question. What is the typical way coaches reach out to players, email, phone, through program coaches? Well, they can't email you right now and they can't phone you because you're not, you know, you're not a junior yet. So they really can't contact you at all. If they like you, they're going to probably reach out to somebody that knows you and find out if you have any interest in their school, wherever their school is. And that's where they're going to, they're going to probably do that, you know, at that end. Um, uh, it's it, under the, the lay of the law, they're not supposed to do that but every coach does it because they want to kind of build their list. So when they start contacting people, they have people that they don't want to call 50 people when 45 of them aren't interested. You know, they want to know that you have some interest. Um, so one of the questions is realizing that this is geared very much towards the 26s since the recruiting is starting for them. What should a 27 look to accomplish and get out of juniors open? Good question. Uh, Tommy, I'll let you go with that one. Yeah, sure. So I think it's an opportunity to kind of do what I explained before around, you know, getting that kind of first look and getting that sort of experience playing outside of your team, like going to a new environment, playing at a super high level, playing um, in a new place in, in front of some eyeballs. Right. So I think as a 27 in this year and like it's always yeah, depending on the year, the younger age group, I think it's a phenomenal experience to get in front of 
Um, you know, the coaches will watch like, uh, you know, and, and they'll, they'll be there. They're at those 27 games, um, you know, so performing in front of them, playing at a really high level, playing with other players, playing for great high school coaches, soaking as much out of that experience as you possibly can um, lays the groundwork for your future, both from a recruiting standpoint and your development standpoint, which um, I think is often neglected when we talk about, you know, this is technically a recruiting um, webinar, I guess, but I think like so much of this, I would kind of consider development, um, in addition to, you know, just recruiting. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity to play at a really high level, um, in, you know, a pretty intense atmosphere for a young player, um, you know, and, and, and start to get used to that because that's going to be the reality from this point forward. Um, and again, we're trying to provide, that opportunity provide the opportunity to kind of have access to us and understand what this whole situation is like prior to, um, you know, your recruiting year. But I think you get a lot out of it just from the experience and your development um, overall. Yeah, I, I think Tommy, that's that. There's no substitute for experience, right? Like having to go through that one summer. And the other thing I would suggest to the twenty sevens is is watching in, in those games, watching some of the watch, – watching the 26s. Like, so if I'm a 27 and I go and if I can go watch some of the 26s play and I know that – all right, so everybody knows everybody, right? So these are the – oh, he's the top midi and he's the top attackman or he's the top defenseman. These are the top five guys. What do they look like? And, and Because that's what, that's what you're going to want to – potentially look like going into that next year. Now, physically, you can only do so much, but, you know, how are they playing the game? You know, uh, are they left and right-handed? How skilled are they? Because that's the vision that you want to create in your mind. If I want to be one of these top recruits next year, this is how, you know, I want to look. This is how I want to play. These are how these guys are playing. So I, I just think it's a great platform to gain experience Right. And then and then actually see what that class looks like. That's that's going to be playing right in front of me and potentially pick up some cues or tips or or some thoughts on how how I want to I want to look and perform next year when I show up at the juniors. And it's and it's my time, so to speak. So um, I, I think, you know, back in the day, we didn't have these opportunities. But if I was a younger kid, that 27 class, I'd be chomping at the bit to get there. Um, and, and kind of start to lay the groundwork for what my recruiting trail is going to look like the next year. I would also just say from like a, um, like a practical standpoint, I guess it's also, you know, our first, first look for next year. So we, the way we kind of build out our invites, it, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of tape. Um, it's a lot of conversations kind of the same way kids get recruited to college, but I would say the very first place where we compile our lists for next year is at this year's event. So we have two evaluators dedicated to each 27 field who have, you know, not, not a grade per se, um, but take notes on each and every guy. So over the course of that weekend, over the course of those five games, like we have a great idea of what that crew looks like. Um, and that's where we start. You know, and then we go through applications, we talk to coaches, we talk with high school coaches, club coaches, we hear from players directly. So we do a whole lot of evaluating, but that's that's stage one. So um, going back to that, the, the initial question, I think there's a lot of ways to get the most out of that experience. Um, I know, I know we're, we're, we're reaching, uh, the hour plateau, but there's a couple questions and I also wanted to share with everybody, um, the people that are going to be, uh, have already, uh, spoke to coach Holman and the list of, uh, of colleges. So I'm just going to share with you without screwing this up a screen, uh, bear with me. Here we go. Please let me know if you can see this, uh, share. Can you see the Google Doc? We can, yep. You're good, Wink. Okay, so Brian, I'll let you talk about it because since you uh, spoke to every one of these coaches. Yeah, boys, these these are these are the guys that have already committed to um, 
coming back to the VIP event, uh, which is Friday morning, and then obviously staying uh, through the weekend. These are just the coaches, the head coaches. Uh, most of them, about 80%, 90% of those guys are head coaches. Um, and and the list for the this list for the VIP event is is growing daily because these guys last year, you know, the experience was was so positive for all of these coaches. And I've speak I've spoken to every one of these guys personally. Um, and you know, they consider the juniors right now, you know, if not the best, one of the top two you know, showcases in the country and they all want to be there and they want to be there through the whole weekend. So these are just guys that are going to work the VIP camp um, and then spend the rest of the weekend. And obviously there'll be the list of coaches that will show up. Will, you know, I don't know, Wink, how many, how many coaches were there last year for the whole weekend? I mean, I think we had a total of like 75 or 80 coaches. They were yeah. um, all division one schools. Um, there was a couple staffs that brought two or three coaches um, I know I did speak with the Johns Hopkins coaching staff. They got their first nine 2025 recruits. Five of them they saw at the juniors open. So out of the first nine that committed to them, I don't know how many they have in their class right now, but this was a few months back when I spoke to them. They said five of them they saw first, and they got their first look at them at the juniors and then obviously followed them throughout the summer and then offered them in the fall and then, you know, obviously got them to come make a visit and, you know, committed to the university and stuff like that. So, you know, when I, I, I like to get the data right from the coaches' mouths because I want to know how good a job we're doing. And that's the only way to know that. Um, obviously having the head coaches there is huge because they're the decision makers. And obviously we asked them after the event, what, what, what can we do better? What should we change? You know, what do you think worked? One of the cool things about Penn Park and one of the positives, I'm going to get this sharing stuff down if it's okay with you guys. Um, one of the cool things is they have the two side-by-side -side turf fields. And one of, the, one of the parents asked about the format. So the format is Friday morning is the VIP. If you're not playing in that, you check in around noon on Friday. We have practices for all the teams uh, Friday from noon to about 7 p.m. rotating on the fields. Uh, then we do, uh, the college coaches and the high school coaches that are working the event and the directors, we do what we call a college coaches high school social. So at the hotel where they're all staying, they'll all get together, um, have a few beverages, have some food, and they'll talk about the kids. And they'll talk about either the kids that are there from their own program or that they are coaching up, the college coaches. And it's just, it's just a big social event. Then the following day, every team plays three games. That's on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you play two games. So that's when the competition and the coaches are at that point are just sitting on the sideline, you know, watching you and recruit. Uh, we're using Franklin Field. For those of you that have never been to Penn, there's Franklin Field, which is up above. And the two Penn Park fields are down below there. It's a it's a good walk. It's probably like a it's probably like a three, 400 yard walk, but you got to walk over an overpass. Um, so if you have to rotate fields, we do keep the 26s just on the two Penn Park fields. They never leave. The 27s will rotate the three fields. So, um, and we do that obviously because we want to make it as convenient for the college coaches and the players to get, you know, seen. And you literally could watch first half and then walk literally 15 yards and watch the second half and it's fenced off and stuff like that. It's a really nice setting and it, it's, it's a beautiful place. Philly, I'm, I'm a New Yorker, but Philly, Philly's a, a cool place. I spent four years there. It's a cool place. I don't like their teams, but the people are all right. Anyway, um, the couple questions. When contacting coaches, should you email them directly or use the IMLCA website? Um, from a college, from a coach's standpoint, Coach Holman, did, did the sports recruits website annoy you? Did you care? Um, I, I'd rather get them directly. So, I mean, yeah. you know, unless, unless somebody has told you otherwise, I would rather the email come directly to me. So just one less thing I have to navigate through. So, yeah. I, I think that would probably be personal preference for the coach um, and, and would say, 
both is probably safe. Yeah. 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 Uh, asking me to go over the VIP again. The VIP is a hands-on experience where the college coaches coach the kids up. They put them through positional training. Uh, the, 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 the coaches that are on the list that um, Coach Holman and we just presented to you uh, coach the kids up. We do a Q&A during that. So we rotate the kids. Uh, Coach Alvarici was there last year. I believe he's coming back. He does a great job talking. Um, and then th then they scrimmage. Then there's some scrimmage play, some competition. Um, it's a four-hour thing in the morning from 8 to 12. Um, coaches want it. They want hands-on. They want it. They want to know how you react to their coaching. I love it from a dad standpoint because then my kid could say, oh, I really liked Coach Oderna from Syracuse. He really knows how to coach defense or – you know, I didn't really like this coach. So, you know, you get a feel for their coaching techniques. Um, so from that perspective, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I'd just add that, that the VIP was added really, you know, for the college coaches. Um, they they wanted kind of that hands-on experience. Um, so that's, a, a, to me, like a tremendous opportunity. Yeah. So. <laughs> If you're and and wink like you you'd know if I, I don't know if we're if there's any availability or not but I, I think if you're attending that I think that's the time to showcase those intangibles we spoke about before attitude effort hustle because those guys aren't necessarily looking at you know of course they'll see oh that guy has good stick skills great but they could see that in your games that's the opportunity to show them who you are. Um, and I think that's like a pretty important piece. So it, it did come from the college coaches, like they wanted something like that. So we tried to design it with that opportunity in mind. Yeah, they, Wink, they, I think we should go maybe one or two more and let, let these folks get back to their night. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, I, I can, I, I'm gonna do this for the defensemen because I always feel like um, the defensemen are left out. Um, <laughs> You know, I have, even though I was an attackman, I do have a love. My my best friend is a defender, my boy Scooby. How can defenders stand out or in a recruiting process, like in showcases? What are the coaches looking for? Uh, I mean, it's, again, it's 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 similar to what you're looking for in offense. It's a myriad of things, right? And I, I just kind of rattled off some things early on. Um, you know, the college game is is a, a Every every college defense is a, a little bit different, right? So, you know, you're you're trying to look for guys that are going to complement the style of defense. So, some defenses are going to be very aggressive, and they're going to want more guys that can play on the ball and be very physical. And so, if you look at Virginia, he's typically his pattern has been really tall and long and lengthy guys that can kind of press out and so on and so forth. So, everybody's going to be looking at something a little bit different, but the, the standards that are going to be universal amongst every defensive coach are, you know, voice in college. You've, you've got to talk on defense. You, you, there's not many college defenses, no matter how great you are, that, that don't communicate very well or have a level of, of communication that, you know, is, is going to be at a high level. Um, so I'm going to listen because it's, 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 it's unique in high school to see a 15 or 16 year old kid really communicate at a high level. So if you've got that skill, exaggerate it because it, it will catch uh, an eye. So, um, you know, you're going to look at your approaches. Approaches in college are vital. Um, there's a lot of sliding that goes on in, in most college defenses. So you're going to have to, uh, you know, be very buttoned up in your approach. Are you out of control? Do you Can you slide with your stick out? Um, do you have timing on your slides to where you're not going too early or you're not going too late? If you are aggressive, are you physical enough to deal with the aggressive slide that, that you can get away with being overly aggressive that, that, you know, your physicality allows you to be that way. So I'm going to look for slide and look for slide timing. Um, I'm going to look for approaches, how you break down, you know, the physical attributes are different. You know, I've coached, I've recruited kids that were five foot eight, 150 pounds, and I've recruited kids that were six foot five, 225 pounds, just depending on what their skill set was. Um, 
you know, physicality. Are you good off the ground? First time clearing in any uh, in any uh, defensive package is 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 crucial. Um, the chances of team scoring, uh, your percentages of scoring, uh, almost triple. Uh, when you give up uh, a, a first time clearing opportunity. So can you get the ball off the ground first time? Um, you know, do you have an escape package? Do you know how to get out of trouble? Same way with carrying a slide or a double team on offense. Um, you know, and the other thing, guys, how is your stick? You know, and that's something I I've, 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 I bitch about with goalies a lot at these things um, is clearing the ball. Same thing with the defenseman. You know, if you if you can't make that right up pass, or you can't make that Cali pass or that over pass on a, on a regular basis. Um, if you're throwing the ball over guys' heads or you're throwing the ball consistently at guys' feet, will I still consider to recruit you? Yes, but that is an issue, right? We don't want it to keep turning the ball over. So, you know, we've got approaches, we've got voice, we've got, you know, the physicality on defense, we've got our, you know, uh, your slide timing. Are we getting the ball off the ground? So, that's a myriad of things to throw at you. Uh, are you going to be good at all those things? Probably not. Okay. Um, I would focus on the things that you are really good at, continue to develop those to a higher level. And maybe if, if there's a couple of things in there that you don't feel you're good at, maybe that's something that you work on between now and by the time you get to juniors uh, in, in, in June. So um, I think that cover it, I guess. Yeah, you covered it all. I, I mean, it, I, I'd just go quick on some of the other positions. I think defensively, it's, it's having a presence. Um, is your stick in the lane? Um, all the things coach just mentioned. Uh, we covered some of the offensive stuff, goalies um, and, and, and face off guys. It starts with stopping the ball and winning the ball. You know, like it's not overly complicated. Goalies, communication. Are you using your defenders' names? is one that I've heard, right? Like that's like one of the, the the tricks, like, are you taking the time? Like, is that, Hey, blue helmet, or is that, Hey, Johnny, because that makes a difference. Like, are you a leader? Can you clear the ball? Do you have the command of a defense? And, and again, like, like coach Holman said before, these guys understand that you're, you know, a, a teenager with kids you don't know, but that's an opportunity right there to show like, Oh, wow, this kid can take command. He doesn't know these guys but he went and did it anyway. Like, that's a trait. That's a kid I want on my team. Um, face off guys. Do you make good decisions? Right. Do you have a good stick? Um, can you pick the ball up? Are you going to sprint on and off the field for your subs? Are you constantly trying to win an advantage for your team, whether it's you winning the ball and making a good pass or, or beating your defender to the box to get an offensive guy on. Um, so, so little things like that. I mean, I think are like, probably some of the the less obvious um, things you should be focused on. Yeah, Tommy, just really quick, and I and I usually start off with this, but you you said stick in the lanes and, and defensemen, you know, most colleges are looking for off-ball players, right? There's only a few guys that can really just guard the ball. And and so, you know, again, if you're if you are a heavy on ball guy, Spend some time over the next few months and, and and think about how you can increase your ability to play off the ball and support your teammates. And that's with voice and stick and just, again, you said it, presence on the field. So it was good. Yeah, I'm going to end it by saying um, this is a great opportunity for you also to build relationships at this event, um, especially when you're, you know, one of 23 to 25 kids on the team and you might only know one or two kids on the team. Um, in this world, because of social media, you might know more, but we're going to present the teams in plenty of time. So you guys could start building relationships. And I guarantee you the teams that try to build a group chat or whatever you do in your social media, crazy to get to know each other, get to know each other and build a relationship. And it'll be a, a much better experience by doing that and, uh, take advantage of it. We have a lot of fun with the, uh, media side to this um, Juniors Open product. And uh, we're going to let you know what team you're on. We're going to promote the hell out of you. And we're going to make sure the world knows that you're at you're in Philadelphia at UPenn Penn Park on June 7th to June 9th. So if you need us, um, please email. You've getting all the emails from me. Email me. I'll send you Coach Schreiber's and Coach Holman's info. And feel free to reach out. Let us know how your spring season's going. I know some of you guys are getting going now, especially you guys in Florida and Texas and California. 
Um, your season's about to start up. For you Northerners, I know you wait until March, but uh, good luck with your spring. You know, take care of yourself, take care of your body. And uh, we're psyched to see you June 7th. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, guys, everybody. Have a good night. Have yeah. a good night, everybody.